Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about this post that showed up on the .NET subreddit a couple of days ago asking how is ASP.NET so fast? Now I'm going to assume not everybody is a .NET developer that's watching this video. So for those of you who don't know, ASP.NET or ASP.NET Core is the web app building branch of the .NET platform. Now what the person who posted this was, was trying to performance test multiple different technologies for building APIs and they discovered that .NET using minimal APIs was four times faster than Go. Now, there's a bit more into that as we're going to see in this post, but what I want to do is I want to give you my take as a .NET developer who's specializing in .NET and API building and also want to criticize the approaches that this person did, the replies from this post, and also a reply by distinguished engineer David Fowler, who's also the chief architect of ASP.NET Core, who explains how they achieve that sort of performance and why they care so much about performance. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, so let's go quickly through the post. So hello guys, I've been playing around with different frameworks and they noticed that ASP.NET is remarkably faster than everything else. For example, according to the test they run on their laptop, minimal API is four times faster than running with a Go HTTP package. Now, from what I understand, they use the default Go HTTP package by default, but later in the post, we're going to see that they also used Fiber that did actually change the performance of things and that they also used a different Go setting, and that is the Go Max Prox environment variable that controls how many Go routines can execute concurrently, where when they increase it to two, it did actually improve the situation, and that's by around 50%, but going anyhow with 0.5 CPUs, because this is run as a Docker container, actually decreased the performance, so there was diminishing returns. Now, they were worried if they're doing something wrong, and they've actually been using Autocannon, which is, as you can see here, a utility for benchmarking applications written in Node.js. Now, I prefer using K6 for my benchmarks or performance tests, but that's what they used, and they used a MacBook Pro of 2018 with an Intel Core i7. Now, in my opinion, the testing methodology doesn't paint the full picture because all they did is they just want to test the framework's performance, not things like the logger or the DB driver and so on. So all they did is they wrote a simple HTTP server that returns a JSON encoded hello world object, and that is it. And they run with 300 megabytes of memory in the Docker container and half a CPU. Now here we can see the settings of the command run. So we have 100 connections, 30 seconds duration, and 10 pipeline requests on this endpoint. And then we have some results back. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called From Zero to Hero, Refactoring for C-Shop Developers. In that course, Nico Centino, a principal software engineering manager in Microsoft, is going to teach you everything you need to know from the very basics on some pretty advanced stuff on how to refactor your C-Shop code. You're going to understand not only the how, but also the why we make the decisions we make. And at the end of this course, you will know how to refactor and write better c -sharp code. Nick has been working at Microsoft for the past three years and he has really seen some good and some bad things, so he really knows what he's talking about and he poured his heart into this course. Now, to celebrate the launch of this course, I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount code. So, use the link in the description and use discount code REFAC20 at checkout to claim it. These do tend to go very quickly, so use it sooner rather than later. Now, back to the video. So, as you can see, the Go HTTP API, on average, did 6,500 requests per second, while the dot Net one did 26,000 requests per second. So that's why they said around four times more requests per second. Not only that, but as you can see, the response times are also actually better in the .NET version. And in total, we did 783,000 requests on .NET, while we only did 196,000 requests in Go HTTP. Again, with the default server, and all of that code is actually in the repo linked over here. Now, later, as a result of the comments of this post, what the author did is they went ahead and they used the Go framework called Fiber that uses fast HTTP behind the scenes, and that actually ended up being 50% faster or around 50% faster than ASP.NET. Keep in mind, Fiber is super, super optimized for that sort of response. Um, and as you can see in fast HTTP, this is basically optimized and tuned to be high performance with zero memory location in hot paths and it's 10 times faster than net.htp, which is the default Go package. And if we scroll all the way down over here, you're going to see that they explain quite a bit how they achieve this and why they achieve this. And the documentation in general is very good, and I highly recommend you check it out because the practices that 
this sort of package uses to optimize performance. It's what other frameworks like .NET can also use to optimize. In fact, many of those practices are used. Now, the main thing I want to focus on is this reply over here by David Fowler, who, like I said, is sort of the chief architect of ASP.NET Core, and he was from the beginning. He's a distinguished engineer in Microsoft, which means super high position, so he really, really knows what he's talking about. Now, David explains that as opposed to fast HTTP repository, they don't really document and explain exactly how they achieve the performance that ASP.NET achieves, which, by the way, if you want to see exactly how .NET and other frameworks compare to each other, you can check the Tech Empower benchmarks. There's a post saying that these are sort of faked in a way by Microsoft, and that can certainly be true for the plain text. Not really faked, but they're very, very optimized to shine this sort of benchmark, but you can't really hide in things like the composites course or more specifically the fortunes, which includes a realistic workflow. And when you filter out only the things that you can really build stuff with, you can see that .NET is very much at the top with 300,000 requests per second. And then you have things like Go over here. You have Gin, which is a very popular package as well, Node, Echo, and so on. You're gonna find Spring, Django, and they don't even come close to .NET. I'm gonna put a link to those in the description so you can do your own research. But Microsoft is taking performance very, very seriously. And I wanna point out that they're doing this very deliberately because Microsoft knows and .NET knows that the platform and the framework can't really be adopted unless it is very, very fast. Even if you add many features, many frameworks have many features and they can implement many features. But Microsoft can't really change the perception that people have about .NET and C Sharp unless they provide something you can't ignore. And if you can run 10 less containers in your Kubernetes cluster and achieve the same performance, then you can't ignore this because this is money. That's why they've been really public about the performance of .NET with infographics, and examples and these benchmarks as well and not so much with the features that .NET and C Sharp have because yeah those are fine but many languages have many nice features not many languages and frameworks are super super fast but still high level enough that you don't hate yourself writing the language <coughs> Java <coughs> so as you can see in examples like this Microsoft has automatic issues that detect regressions based on previous .NET versions so they're automated benchmarks that detect that there's a regression in performance and if there's a regression I guess you have to justify why but if you can't you have to fix it and in this case it was fixed as you can see over here 3.03 percent change not acceptable they went ahead and they fixed it performance is baked into everything dotnet is doing nowadays and you can see the same thing with crank which we're gonna make a video at some point about but crank is a great utility for benchmarking as well. And whether that is JIT, garbage collection, or call libraries, Microsoft is baking performance into everything. In fact, they have a special label for performance over here. And you can see how many performance improvements they had. And they still have, even for .NET 9, even though .NET 8 just launched, .NET 9 still gets performance improvements with things like array pools and so on. And one of the biggest parts of C Sharp as well and .NET is performance-based utilities to eliminate any sort of regression in performance. Now, in terms of why .NET and ASP.NET is so fast, you can see that a few of the core categories they focus on is a lot of pooling, and pooling is the idea that you create sort of your object beforehand, you keep it inside the pool, and then you can rent that object, maybe change it, reuse it, and then put it back to the pool. And this means that you have a pre-allocated object you can just use and just put back into the pool and everything and keep using this assuming there's enough objects in the pool which means you don't have to deal with any garbage collection any heap allocation or fragmentation they even pin those objects into the heap because garbage collection doesn't only delete objects from the heap but it also reorganizes objects as things are deleted or garbage collected then you can see even more pooling where possible to prevent allocations for example the requests and responses when it's possible they also store and use the connections and the pooling as well so it's very 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 optimized when possible things like the http parser is vectorized and we see more and more vectorization as more dotnet version is being released both socket and thread pool implementations in dotnet have been rewritten to be optimized and not allocate and avoid extra thread hopping where possible which again improves performance and also value tasks are again 
pool to avoid more allocations because value task is a struct version of the task object, which is used everywhere in .NET. By being a struct, it means it can be allocated on the stack, while a typical task is a reference type, which will always be on the heap. However, by pooling those value tasks, they prevent even more allocations. And then they use zero byte reads to avoid allocations on underlying sockets until there's data available to read and process. Now, if you're in .NET, you're probably familiar with Stephen Taub's annual performance improvements in .NET Post. But actually, for the past three years now, we also get an ASP.NET Core-specific performance improvements post by Brennan Conroy, who is someone who's very influential as well in the ASP.NET Core side of performance in .NET. And they're not as long as Stevens, even though I think they've been getting bigger and bigger, especially the latest one over here. So hopefully one day he can have his own 200 page book of performance improvements. But if you read those, you're going to understand exactly how Microsoft has been improving performance. And the themes you're going to detect are basically remove heap allocations, tons of pooling, using spans where possible, reusing connections, reusing response, reusing but lots of reusing, which is a bit ironic in my opinion because the biggest advantage of a high-level language that is managed like c -sharp is the garbage collector but now we're very cautious about not allocating on the heap so we have no garbage collection where possible now this is how i write code and many of you watching my videos is also how you write code i'm sure but i'm personally learning how to do this by looking at ASP.NET code because it's using those techniques heavily and you're gonna see way more of those techniques in my videos in 2024 so please subscribe for that now a couple of things i want to mention we talked about the go max prox environment variable which which can improve performance if changed. So that was done and was still 50% less performant with the default implementation. And by the way, Fiber is a third party implementation in Go, which is so much faster. And in .NET, we don't have that equivalent. In our case, the fast implementation, as far as I am aware, is the built-in implementation of ASP.NET Core. But if you know of some package that does .NET API request handling faster, please leave a comment down below and let me know. Then there's someone who used their MacBook M2 Pro to see how performance would scale. And in that case, we had 57,000 requests per second on average with the same configuration. So 100 connections with 10 pipelining factors for 30 seconds. And in Go, if you increase CPU to one because it does scale better, we had only 9.8. 8,000 requests per second. In that same configuration, still with .NET 7, if you use CPUs 1 instead of CPUs 0.5 with .NET, you get 157,000 requests per second, which is insane. Now, many people have many feelings about .NET, and if you're not a .NET developer, I can totally understand how you might dismiss this as the benchmark being flawed or Microsoft trying to optimize or micro-optimize for something that doesn't really matter. But ASP.NET and .NET in general are extremely fast nowadays and there's a reason for that microsoft is investing tons of money and resources in making it very fast because they know that's how they can win people if they have something especially with things like native aot now that is very fast very small self-contained and it has cloud native elements in it which you can see now with dotnet aspire for example which if you don't know i have a video on that as well then that's maybe how you can win an audience but now i want to know from you what do you think about all this whether you're a dotnet developer or not did you know that dotnet is so fast and is performance enough to make you jump ship into something else leave a comment down below and let me know well that's all i have for you for thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding